and welcome to another episode of Energy Express. I'm your host, Zach Harold, and I'm right back here at West Virginia State Capitol in Charleston. We're going to wrap up the week with a visit to Miss Amy's farm. Hope you'll come along. Hi friends, it's Miss Amy with West Virginia University Extension Service Family Nutrition Program. Welcome to Learn, Grow, Eat, Go. Today, we're gonna to be talking all about pears. Are you familiar with my plate? What section of my plate do you think pears falls into? That's right, the fruit category, good job. I have with me some pears. Let's talk about the nutritional value that pears provide to our bodies. Well, we know they're in the fruit category, so they have to be filled with vitamins. Pears provide our bodies with fiber, which helps us go to the bathroom, potassium, which helps our muscles move, and vitamin C, which keeps our immune system healthy. Let's take a look inside a pear. I have with me three pears. This pear is called a red kefir pear. This pear is called a Bartlett pear. And this pear is called an Asian pear. All of the pears feel very similar on the outside. Their skin is very smooth, but you can see that they are three different colors. Let's cut open our pears and take a look on the inside. The inside of the pear feels wet. It's very moist. And where the peel or the skin is, is very, very thin. All the way in the center, you'll see very tiny seeds, but pears don't actually have a thicker core like an apple does. Let's try another one. So you can see similar to the red kefir pear, the Bartlett pear is juicy on the inside, has very thin skin, and has barely no core. The seeds are very small inside the pear. Mmm, it smells very good. Mmm. Pears are very sweet, and they're firm on the inside, but very juicy. Most of the nutrients are actually found in the peel, so it's important to leave the skin or the peel on your pear when you eat it. Pears can be eaten raw, which means all you need to do is wash the outside of your fruit and eat it, or pears can be cooked. Some people will grill them, some people will boil them, and a lot of people will can them. So where do pears come from? Where can we find them? We know we can find them in a grocery store and we can find them in the farmer's market in the fall here in West Virginia, but where and how do they grow? Let's go explore a farm and see how pears grow. Let's take a look at how pears grow. Pears grow on trees. Pear trees are what you would call deciduous, meaning they lose their leaves every year. When a pear tree blossoms, it has white flowers that each have five petals. The flowers, after pollinated, turn into the fruit, or what we know as the pear. When you harvest pears, you pick them from the tree. Normally, you let pears sit on your counter for three to five days to ripen up. You can determine when a pear is ripe when you press on it by the stem and it gives a little bit. Pears can be consumed fresh, canned, as juice, or dried fruit. People also use them to make jams and jellies and pie. Pears can be found at your local farmer's market in September and October in West Virginia. Today's story is a fruit 
is A Suitcase for Seeds. It was written by Jean Richards and illustrated by Anka Harrington. Most plants have seeds. When you put a seed in the ground and water it, a new plant grows from it. Seeds often travel to faraway places. If seeds did not travel, too many seeds would grow in one place. It would be very crowded. Some seeds travel on the wind. Some seeds travel in the water. Many seeds travel inside fruit. The fruit is like a suitcase for the seeds. It protects them on their trip. Fruits look beautiful and taste good, so animals and people eat them and drop seeds in different places. Some fruits carry one big seed inside them. The seed is called a pit. There are some examples of pit fruits. A cherry is one of these fruits. Some fruits have many small seeds inside of them. An apple is an example of these fruits. Some fruits have many, many tiny seeds inside them. A kiwi is one of these fruits. Many berries, such as strawberries and blackberries, carry their seeds on the outside. Raspberries do too. Some vegetables we eat are really fruits. They carry seeds too. Peas are seeds. Can you find the seeds on this ear of corn? Hmm, hint, it's the part you eat. I'll bet you didn't know that every time you eat a peach, a cherry, an avocado, a plum, a cucumber, a tomato, a grape, an apple, an orange, a pea, a pear, a melon, a banana, or a blueberry, you're really eating a suitcase. A suitcase for seeds. The end. Besides eating our fruits and vegetables, it's important that we get physical activity every day. Let's go see what fun activity Miss Shannon has for us to try. Hi everybody, Miss Shannon here, and for today's physical activity, you get to pick which exercise you'd like to do. If you like pears, you're gonna do jumping jacks. If you like apples, you're gonna be doing arm circles. Okay friends, if you like tomatoes, you're gonna to be doing squats. If you like onions, you're gonna be doing knee highs. Okay friends, if you like cabbage, you're gonna be doing punches. If you like lettuce, you're gonna be doing front kicks. Okay friends, if you like zucchini, we're gonna be running in place. If you like bananas, we're gonna be doing toe touches. Okay friends, if you like Brussels sprouts, you're gonna balance on your right foot. If you like berries, you're gonna balance on your left. Okay friends, if you like cucumbers, you're gonna hop on your right foot. If you like pickles, you're gonna hop on your left. Did you know that pickles come from cucumbers? Thanks friends for joining me in our physical activity today. Have a great day. Hi, my name's Noelle and I am with WVU Extension Services Family Nutrition Program. Today we're here at Capital Market to talk about sugar sweetened beverages. So down here I have several sugar sweetened beverages and I'm wondering if you can guess which one is the healthiest for you. Which one has the least sugar? There's an energy drink, a sports drink, iced tea, a soda pop, 
or some vitamin water. So, which one do you think has the most sugar in it? Hmm. Well, let's find out by looking at the nutrition fact label. On the back of this energy drink, it says that it has 120 calories in it per serving, and it has 30 grams of added sugar. So 30 grams, how do we figure out how much that is? You know, we don't usually measure in grams. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the number of grams of sugar on the, on the nutrition label, and you're gonna divide that by four, and that'll give you how many teaspoons it is. So 30 divided by four is 7.5. That tells you how many, how many teaspoons of sugar are in your energy drink. But watch out, on this energy drink, there are two servings per container. So that means you have to double everything. So it doesn't have 120 calories, it has 240 calories. And it doesn't just have 30 grams of sugar, it has 60 grams of sugar. So that'd be 15 teaspoons of sugar in your energy drink. Let's decide how much sugar is in a regular sweetened pop. So I've got some sugar here and we're gonna measure it out. On the, on the nutrition label for pop, it says that there are 55 grams of sugar. So if we divide that by four, we're gonna get 13 and three quarters. So here's my sugar and here's my teaspoon. Let's see what that looks like. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, keep going, 11, 12, and 13, and then we do three quarters, so I'm gonna fill it almost all the way, and that is how much sugar is in this soda. So that looks like a lot of sugar to me, but the question is, so what? So what if your soda has this much sugar in it? Is that a lot? Is it too much? Is it not enough? How do we know? Well, the USDA recommends that we take in no more than 50 grams of sugar a day. That is 12 and a half teaspoons, and it looks like this. This is more than the amount of sugar that it's recommended for us to have in one day. So if I drink one soda a day, then I can't have any more sugar for the rest of the day, not as part of my lunch or my dinner or my breakfast or heavens, not dessert. So if you drink one sugar sweetened beverage a day, then you're taking in more sugar than you should have. And we know that sugar is not good for your health. If you're a child and you drink one sugar sweetened beverage a day, you're in big trouble because the USDA and the CDC recommends no more than six teaspoons of sugar for them. So if this is too much sugar for us to drink, what are we gonna do about it? Well, we need to cut down on our sugar sweetened beverages. Drink water instead. Water is good for your body and your body needs it to survive. So it cushions your brain it helps your blood flow throughout your body, delivering oxygen to your entire body. It lubricates your joints. That's important stuff, so make sure you're cutting back on your sugar-sweetened beverages and drinking water instead. Hi friends, it's Miss Amy here. We're visiting Warm Springs Intermediate School and we are gonna help some of our friends plant sunflowers for their Van Gogh garden. Yay! Hi guys! I've missed you, we've been well-behaved and good. Yeah. All right, so we all know the rules of the high tunnel, right? No running. No running. That's really the only rule, right? Because we're still inside and we want to keep everything safe. So today what we're going to do is plant Miss Ruggiero's Van Gogh painting garden, right? So did you guys get to do Van Gogh paintings in the fall? So what's one thing you think we need to do before we start planting? Water. Not water. We got to put our gloves on. Go on down and find the glove box. We'll put on a pair of gloves, try to find a right and a left. Yeah. Well, we're, I wanted to separate them out. Let's bring them to the table. What are these? Uh, leaves. 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 And these are our first true leaves. My flowers are missing. Still growing out. You want to pull the seed head off there? There we go. Yay. So when we pull these out of the salt pack, you got to be careful not to damage the stem so much. But we can break them apart to see what's this. The root. The root. The root. The root. The root. Mm -hmm. I don't have one. We can all. How do you get them out? 
That was unexpected. Hey. What? Yeah. I, I, I did okay. We have so many that if one gets hurt, it's okay. Uh, Do we put it? Never mind. Oh, man. Exploded. Okay, you. You. No. Do I see what I did? Is anyone in Miss class? I am. So you remember how we made rose when we planted our lettuce? Oh, this is called a stirrup cup. It's for planting. So these back two rows, every six inches, remember what six inches looks like about your hand? Yeah. That's about like how far I would like the sunflowers planted. And I'll show you, and then you can get another one because you can plant as many as you want. What you're going to do is take your sunflower and you're going to plant it just to where the stem starts to change color deep enough to support the plant. And then just cover it back up and pack it in. Okay? And let's try to do a, two rows. So we're going to put tall sunflowers in the back and short sunflowers in the front. Yes. Shower time. I like more. No, no. Okay. three of them. The group with Miss Acres. I told Miss Buck I was only going to one group. That's the show fault. Learn, grow, eat, and go, just like we did in the classroom. Like you did with the other. Let's go visit Miss Molly in the kitchen and see how to make fruit salsa with churro chips. Hi, I'm Molly with West Virginia University Extension Family Nutrition Program. Welcome to my kitchen. Today we're gonna make apple pear salsa with cinnamon chips. And we're gonna make our own cinnamon chips. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna take flour tortillas and simple ingredients, sugar, cinnamon, and some vegetable oil spray, and we're gonna bake those in the oven. Now I've already got my oven preheating to 350 degrees. I've washed my hands, cleaned my cooking surfaces, so I'm all ready to go. I'm going to spritz them with some vegetable oil spray so that our cinnamon sugar mixture sticks. And I have three tablespoons of white sugar and one teaspoon of cinnamon. Mix that all together and then sprinkle it on the tortillas. And as I pick up each tortilla, whatever doesn't stick is going to go down to the next one. And then once we've got our tortillas all coated, I've got my pizza cutter and I'm going to cut these into triangles just like tortilla chips. Half, quarters, and then quarters and half. And then we're gonna take these and put them on cookie sheets. And I've lined my cookie sheets with parchment, but you could use tin foil. Okay, so I've got my two trays ready to go, and I'm gonna put these in my 350 degree oven. and just keep an eye on those while they get nice and crisp. Now with our apple pear salsa, it does have celery in it. And it sounds strange, but it actually adds a really great crunch to it. So we just need a half a cup of chopped celery. So I have washed all of my fresh fruits and vegetables. I cut off the ends of both stalks of celery. And then I'm going to cut down the middle, line up those stalks, and now I'm going to chop them finely. So I've got a half a cup of chopped fresh celery. And now we're going to work on our apples. We've got two large tart apples. The tartness is just gonna help offset our sweet orange juice and the brown sugar and the dressing. So we're gonna cut our apple. We're gonna cut it in half first and then put those halves down flat. 
doesn't make any sense to try to cut it when it's jiggling all over the place. So we've got our halves and then we're gonna cut those in half and then very carefully, keeping your fingers out of the way, we are going to go in and remove the core. How easy is that? And then I'm gonna cut these pieces into sticks and then turn them around and cut them. Oh, that one got away. Turn them around and cut them into little pieces. I'm gonna check in again on my chips. They look great. And so now our star of the show is our pear. So I'm going to prep this. And we're gonna treat this just like the apple and cut it in half and put our flat sides down. Pears are very high in fiber, soluble and insoluble, so they're great for our digestive health. They are fat-free and low in calories. And again, a lot of that good stuff's in the skin, so I encourage you not to peel it. Okay, I'm gonna take that big stem off. Now, again, just like with the apple, I'm gonna take the core out. Pears also have a lot of vitamin C, vitamin K, and we're just gonna dice them up nice and small. So I went through one way and I'm just gonna rough chop through the rest of them. Because again, we we're thinking salsa, not fruit salad. We want little bite-sized pieces that we can pick up with our chips. We're gonna add it to the apple and our celery. The orange, we're going to use not just the juice, but the zest. Tons of flavor are in the skin. And we're just going to run our orange down the zester. You don't wanna like keep going on a side like you're grating cheese because this white part tastes very bitter. We just want the bright orange. So you go down once and turn, down once and turn. Now I'm gonna cut my orange in half and I have this juicer. Okay, so now I'm gonna measure my two teaspoons of zest. and then measure three tablespoons of orange juice. And now we're going to add a quarter cup of chopped walnuts. And of course you can omit this part or switch out the nuts. And then I have a tablespoon of light brown sugar and we're gonna let that hang out while we prepare our grapes. These have been washed and dried and we're gonna cut them in half and then in half again. I'm going to do about a half cup of chopped grapes. I'm gonna add those in. So I've got my cinnamon sugar chips over here. Add them to your plate. And then add some of our salsa. Mmm. So bright and fresh tasting. Check out our website for the full recipe and check out our YouTube channel for more videos. Thanks so much for joining me today and making this amazing apple pear salsa with me. I hope you give it a try. Thanks for joining us today on Learn, Grow, Eat, Go. I hope that you have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time.
Well, it's been a really fun week. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. We'll be back Monday for another full week of fun educational content. Hope to see you there.